Okay, so now we I've, I've done one of these before uh, back in physics. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one for you here. Um, what we're interested in is how fast can the car go around this banked track, all right, uh, without sliding, okay? Now, in order for that to happen, that means the friction is going to be acting downhill, okay? So, the faster it goes, the more it's going to try to uh, end up sliding towards the outside. So, there's our friction there. And we got our normal force here. And, of course, we've got our weight here. And uh, those are the only things we've got going on. Now, what we might want to make a note of here is the direction of the acceleration, which is this way, towards the center. Okay, back in, uh, in there. All right, so now let's get to our free body diagram. Okay, and now a lot of times on an embankment, we want to do something like this. Okay, and if we look at how the forces line up, that's pretty cool. Friction, normal. Okay, this is the parallel component of the weight. Perpendicular component of the weight. Okay, um, that's my normal right there. Okay, but 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 look at this. And we, and we normally do that because things line up really well with the axes of our system. But our acceleration is this way, which means n nothing really fits. Okay, nothing really fits. Um, so because the acceleration is at this weird angle, um, doing our force analysis with our free body diagram at that angle doesn't make any sense this time. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. That's not helpful to us. Okay, and let's do a free body diagram coordinate system that is compatible, more compatible with the direction of the acceleration. And that means just a traditional, oops, a traditional free body diagram. Okay. All right, now it does mean we've got some angles to deal with, okay? So my normal force is up here, like this. My friction is at a right angle to that. Here's my weight. Okay, and let's get the acceleration on there. It's this way, okay? All right, let's talk about angles. Okay, this this is our angle theta there. That happens to be this angle and that angle. Okay, so just sort of imagine if 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 theta went to zero, okay, then we know the normal force would be straight up. Okay, sort of like that, and the friction would be directly to the left instead of at an angle. Okie dokie. Now <clears throat> we can get to it. So um, I, I like to start with the Y component. So, okay. Okay, it's MAY. It's actually zero here. Okay, but now it's it's a little more complicated. Look at this. I've got I need my Y component of my normal force. And then minus the y component of the friction, okay? And then minus mg, and that's equal to zero, okay? There's no acceleration in that direction there, okay? Um, now, the y component of n is this guy right here, okay? It's along that side right there. So that makes it in cosine theta. Okay, the y component of f is going to go as sine theta. So it's friction sine theta minus mg is zero. Okay, now the friction is, is mu times the normal force, so we can make that substitution. So we're left here with n cosine theta minus mu times the normal force, sine theta, 
And I'm going to go ahead and put plot my MG over to the other side. Okay, so we're left with that right there. Uh, let's do one more step of algebra here. I've got ins in there. Let's pull those out as a common term. Cosine theta minus mu sine theta. Well, that's a terrible parenthesis. Is mg. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't know yet when I get to my horizontal information, the x information, I don't know quite yet what I need. Okay. So I've got something there. Algebraically, it looks pretty sweet. In terms of units, it looks sweet because all this is unitless. I've got um, newtons here, or pounds there. This is also going to be pounds here. Okay. So that's kind of nice. All right. So let's go to the other side. Uh, look at the horizontal stuff. All right. And that's the R direction. So there's where my centripetal acceleration term is going to go in there. Okay. Now I've got these components again. So I've got minus in X minus the X component of the friction. And that's MAC, which is going to be M minus V squared over rho. Okay. And uh, I'll look all these are, the minus signs are going to cancel out. Okay. Let's simplify it just a little bit. So in X plus FX is M V squared over rho. Okay. Now I've got to put those component terms in just like I did before. So this it's the X component, but be careful. See where my angle is. That's going to be sine theta. Okay. Then I've got F cosine theta and all that is M V squared over rho. Okay. And substitute in again for my friction, which is mu times the normal force. So we've got N sine theta plus mu in cosine theta. That's my MV squared over rho. And again, let's go ahead and go with um, another step of algebra. Simplify this thing just a little bit. So N sine theta plus mu cosine theta is MV squared over rho. There we go. Okay. And again, let's take a quick look at our units. No units here. This has got to be pounds. This is a mass times an acceleration. So that's also a unit of force. Okay. All right. Now, um, what we could do, we could like try different sorts of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both of these equations. All right. So that's how I'm going to approach it algebraically. So let me call this equation A, call this equation B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go B divided by A. Okay. So B divided by A, um, I'm going to end up with N sine theta plus mu cosine theta. And that's divided by N cosine theta minus mu sine theta. And that's going to be equal to mv squared over rho divided by mg. Okay. So kind of study that carefully. That's kind of a fun little trick um, that we can pull out there. Uh, you can see, however, what's going to happen is we're going to lose the n's and we're going to lose the m's. So we have an, a result here that doesn't depend on the mass of the car. It's 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's all going to come out in the wash. Now we're looking for uh, velocity. Okay, so I'm going to take my G over to the other side. I'm going to take my rho over to the other side. So I'm going to have rho G times all this stuff here. Sine theta plus mu cosine theta over cosine theta 
minus mu sine theta. That's equal to my v squared, okay? All right, from here, you can work it out. All right, so you can just plug in some numbers there. Just be careful and obviously remember to take the square root of all that. Um, lots of places to screw that up, okay? Lots of places to screw that up. Um, what I want to do is I want to say, though, um, what if instead of determining the maximum safe speed, how would it be different if we were trying to determine the minimum safe speed? What would change here? Well, one of the things that would change is uh, the sl if, if it goes slow, then the friction is going to end up going the other direction because it's going to try and slide down the hill. And so that means the friction would actually be here. And what that's going to end up doing for us is that means my and my free body diagram, my friction is up here. Okay. And so I would have plus here. And I would end up having a minus here because I would have had a plus here to begin with. Okay. And so that's going to change my signs of my friction all the way through. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And then I would just carry on that out to see um, um, to, to see what my final result for my velocity would be. Okay. And um, I, I, what would end up happening uh, if I chased all that down is I'd end up with a minus up here and a plus down here. Okay. So that's kind of cool the way all that works out. Now, let me undo that. And we're going to look at one more. Okay, so now we're back to our original there. Okay, uh, we need to get rid of that friction arrow. There we go. Okay, what if there were no friction at all? Okay, what if there was no friction? Well, if there was no friction at all, then you can see I'm going to lose those terms completely. Okay, um, and everything's still going to pan out, but I end up not having this those two terms right there at all. It's like mu goes to zero. Okay. That works out that way. Okay. So that would be uh, the sweet spot where we could go around that curve without any friction at all. Okay. Now what the friction does for us, is it ends up giving us a range. Okay. So again, let me get rid of the marks that I just made. Okay, so what we what we end up having because of the friction is we're going to have some maximum speed, and that's what we found originally up here, but then there's some minimum speed as well. Okay, and our actual speed is going to be in between there. Okay, so we've got to be less than or equal to that and greater than or equal to that, okay? So we have this whole range of speeds where we can go around that corner and and not slide up or slide down either way, okay? All right, there we go. So I think we beat that thing uh, to death. Um, but um, anyway, again, you can plug those numbers in right there, okay? So our next two, next two problems are pretty straightforward. They're not as algebraically involved as this one um, is, okay?